Have you ever played a golf course completely blind? And what I mean by blind is not blindfolded or don't look where you're going. What I mean is playing it for the very first time. And that's exactly what I'm doing here at Clevedon Golf Club here on the west coast of England, southwest coast of England. Beautiful golf course, beautiful front nine, but I've never played the back nine. So today's video, I'm gonna be talking you through every single shot. For example, this is the 10th fairway, 340 yards. I would normally like to have a big bash at this and just smash it, but to me, I can see trees left, I can see trees right, I can see a pole in the middle that's probably telling me that's gonna be the middle of the fairway. I need to pick a golf club that's going to keep me in play. Now, it doesn't automatically mean it will keep me in play. I've still got to hit a decent shot. But for me, a three iron, I'm generally, say generally because I never know, right a bit more comfortable. Drawing towards the left. It's not drawing too much, so that's fine. Okay, so we're away. It's a decent shot. I can't see where the ball's landed. Don't know how it's reacted. Visually, it looked like it was probably going down the left side of the fairway to maybe semi roughish. don't know. At the moment, I'm not worried because what I see, it looks okay. Okay, so as you can see, just got to my golf ball. Range finder is out. I can see a bunker to the left, a bunker to the right. I've got quite an open second shot, really. Hedges over the back. Yardage, 95 yards. So hit a decent tee shot around about 245 with that three iron. Downwind, slightly off the right, 95 yards. So I'm gonna punch in a 54 degree. 54 full out for me is about 115. So obviously I don't need to hit it full out. I just wanna hit a nice controlled one. Wind off the right, so the, if you see the big tree in the distance to the right of the flag is my target line. Hopefully with the wind just pushing it for me. Ball position just back of center on this one as well. I'm just gonna just really punch it through the grass. I think I played it well. Oh, I've not hit it hard enough. Ah, oh, no, I've probably only hit that about 85. I've got a good bit left for a uh, putt. Hit it perfectly, I just didn't hit it hard enough. All right, so actually not too bad. Three, four, five, six yards short, actually. I thought I was a lot shorter from just visually, couldn't really tell. Right, putt for birdie, up the hill, right to left. Greens look really, really nice. They've just hosted a PGA Euro Pro Tour, which has now become extinct as well, which is also a shame. It's online as well, I've not hit it. Uh, okay, solid par to start. Right, 11th hole, 400 yards in distance, but I'm playing it from the forward tee because he's doing a bit of tree surgery behind me, so it's a little bit, a little bit shorter. Much more open than the last I can see everything. I can see the green. Got trees down the right going into the next fairway. So I know there's plenty of space really. I'm not overly worried. Obviously left we've got the we've got the water and bushes. So really I think this is just pretty much straight at the flag. Wind off the right as well, which kind of suits my shape. Perfect. Starting to get my swing back as well. So from this distance, I don't usually use a range finder or anything like that because personally I like to try and use a bit of feel from this kind of distance. So I'm opting away from the range finder. Sometimes I just get too in depth, oh, it's 42 yards. And I'm thinking, well, I haven't got a clue how far to swing for 42 yards. At least for like 85, 90, 100, I've got an idea of what I'm trying to do. This sort of distance, honestly, it's feel. Now, the flag looks like it's quite close to the front which is not a great place for being this close to the actual flag. I'm gonna try and land it on the apron or like the, the, the front just in front of the green. If I get a good strike, it will stop quite quickly. There it is. Go on, chase, 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 chase. Mm, not bad, 10 foot maybe. At the end of the day, you can only play off the tees allocated on the day, and thank you to the tree surgeons, because this is actually normally stroke index three, so it's one of the harder holes on the course. I've played it probably 30 to 50 yards shorter. Happy days, not complaining. Background, got whales. 
Yeah, totally different country. That's not really, it's all part of the UK. Right, uphill, right to left, not much in this. I'm gonna go right on the edge of the hole, just try and get my pace a little bit better than the previous hole. I just don't hold enough putts. I just never, I never hit them hard enough. I can never get myself, just to, I'd rather knock it two foot past. Like, that's so easy on that line. I, I need to learn to finish about here if I miss. Right, so on this hole, I'm gonna serve you up with some serious nuggets of information. All right, so for this hole, I couldn't, I can't see the fairway, I can't see the flag, I can't see the green. I didn't know that, so when I was up on that green, the previous green, I could see straight down the hole. So I was able to now, I'm, always, I'm almost able to create a picture in my mind of how this hole looks based on the information that I saw from the green and from what I can see now. The flag, I could just about make out the top edge of it. So the, the hole itself curves a little bit round from right to left. Also, what you should do, if you can, is look at other greens, look at pin positions and stuff around other greens. So when I was actually on hole number 11, as I was walking off that tee, I looked to the side, and that's the, the 18th green. I could see the pin position. I could see the bunkers around the green. And hopefully, later on in the round, I'm going to remember about where they are. Also, as well, when I'm walking down this hole, if there's other holes that I'm due to play later on, I can start to see how they're shaped. I can start to see the, the danger around the greens and the bunkers and where the flag is. Just start to paint pictures before you even get to the holes. That's a great way of understanding the golf course before on holes on the golf course before you even get there. So I've never played this hole, not a clue. If I didn't know where the flag was having looked at the previous green, I wouldn't really know where I'm looking. So I'm going to give myself some yardages. So the trees on the left, 246, so they're obviously in range. Trees over there on the far right hand side, 367. So if I come back a little bit, 247. So I've kind of got a corridor now of where I know I can hit my driver, okay? I don't know how dense the trees are. I'm not trying to go over them, but I'm just still trying to paint that picture of how the hole looks. Took me two seconds, three yardages. I've got an idea of the hole from that, looking at that, from that green. And I feel like I should have, the only excuse now is my golf swing. I'm past the trees that are zapped at 250. I'm left of those. Yeah, I can see the ball bouncing a few times. It's kind of between the two sets of trees that I zapped. So I'm not sure, it depends on how the bounces are and what really comes into play once I get up there. I saw two big bounces. I generally take that as a positive. Guys, comment below. Do you tend to play better on golf courses you've never played before? Do you play a lot worse? I've got the experience when I was younger, playing these like away tournament days. I used to play really well almost the naivety of not knowing where to go and not knowing the danger made me just kind of smash it. You get, you need a bit of luck. You need to be kind of smashing it in the right direction, obviously. But I just always felt so free on a golf course that I didn't know. And actually I found that when I'd go back and play it, I was so much more aware of like, oh my God, there's a hazard there. I didn't even know about it. That I'd start to tense back up again. It's a funny old game, isn't it? Right, just getting to my golf ball, it is actually just underneath the trees there, so I'm okay. There's that naivety I was talking about. Could have been so much more left, but I've got lucky, I'm okay. And I'm probably not that far away from the green. But I do have a little bit of tree trouble. It's not gonna be easy at all, this shot. I was hoping that these weren't gonna be in my way, but yeah, they are. So I have to manufacture something from 175 yards, oh actually, from 175 yards, this is where a little bit of imagination comes in. I've got to try and now feel, from 175, I can get to the green, it's a, it's a seven iron distance. I could probably punch a five iron with a half swing and get there. So it's, now it's just trying to figure out the best alternative to not hitting my full seven iron, obviously, because I won't be able to with the swing. Oh, actually, could I hit a full seven iron? If I aim it just right at the green with a little draw, I think I could actually. I could just hit my normal shot. 
which anytime you can hit your normal golf shot without manipulating it too much, go for it. I've got slightly up, got overhanging trees there, which is now putting me off. I do not want to catch them. These are thick trees. So if I catch it, no, I actually should be okay. I'm going to aim at the right edge of the green and draw it to the flag. I've got a little bit more room left that way. Right. Worst case, worst shot's a push. But then obviously I am wary that I've got enough club to hit the flag. And if I pull it too much, I'm in the water. Come on, just commit to your golf shot. That's not really going to be in my way. I'm going to grip down anyway, just in case. Just swallowed a leaf. Oh, wow. I've actually just hit it over the back. It kind of started exactly on the line that I mentioned and didn't turn at all. And it's just caught the back fringe. I really hope videos like this, you can get plenty out or plenty of information, ideas, the kind of mindset that I go through as a professional golfer or how maybe a, a low handicapper would go kind of go at these different types of shots. We're always trying to get the most out of every shot. It's never like, oh, let's just chip out sideways. We look for every other alternative before we get to that point. But then also you've got to weigh up the pros and cons of every single shot. Now, obviously when I explain it, sometimes it can come across like it's taking me ages, but once you start to do it more and more, it just becomes kind of second nature. But every golfer you see that is of a really good level will go through this sort of procedure. Right, let's get up and down for birdie because the last is haunting me. It's hurting. Right, to analyze the last shot, I was obviously lucky to have an actual, to have a swing and I kind of played it to the corner of the green that I wanted to. Had it hit the green, greens are much more receptive so it wouldn't have taken the big bounces. Because it's landed on the fairway or the fringe, it tends to hit that first bounce quite hard. I'm just over the back here. Sit there, sit there, sit, sit. Right, now we're cooking. Yes. That guys, because I missed the one on the last, normally I'd just say I'd give myself that. But because the last was such a shambles and a disgrace, I can't bring myself to do it. Okay, that's anyway, it's nice to tidy up for birdies. We go one under. I needed that. All right, 13th hole, 290 yards. Real, these holes, these holes are so interesting. 290 yards, initially you think, ooh, driver, should I, can I? But then, to be honest, you think, what's the point? So the trees on the right, to reach them, is 217. To reach the trees on the left, is 240. So, the decisions on these types of holes, because you would just think, you know what, I could just hit a little fade off the right edge of the left trees and just knock it on the green. But then you're kind of thinking, well, why if I hit it 230, up the middle of the fairway with a three iron, I can pitch it on from 60, 70 yards, make a birdie that way. Otherwise, a three wood option brings everything into play and still doesn't reach the green. Driver's the only play where I could probably hit the green, but visually, again, as I look at that, behind the green, just looks like there's no room, looks like there's trees. So I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play safe. I'm not gonna be stupid here. I'm actually not even going to hit a three iron, I'm going to hit a four iron because we hit a three iron before and it went 240. So that brings those left trees into play. Now, it's easy, all well and good to say, I'll just aim slightly right of them, but if I pull it, I'll be blocked out by the trees, whereas a four iron's not going to go 240. Middle of the fairway. Wasn't the best strike in the world, but it's middle of the fairway. Well, it's actually right edge of the fairway, technically, because the way it slopes, moves, we're fine. We're absolutely fine. All right, it's a good drive. Yep, four iron brings me close to the trees on the right. Wouldn't have reached the trees on the left, but had I pulled it too much, I would have been overhanging. With the, well, the branches would have been overhanging. Found the middle of the fairway, or found the fairway. 74 yard flag. Now I'm starting to relate back to some shots I've already hit today. My very first hole, the 10th hole, I hit the 54 degree from 85 yards. Probably left it... Probably left it, I think I left it six short, so I hit it 79. Now, 79 here would be a disaster because it'd go over the back, but I could take a little bit more off it with the same club. 
look at the same kind of technique and shot where I just put it slightly back of center in my stance just to get that kind of nice penetrating flight and it got such a soft landing as well it's got plenty of spin on it that's a good shot stay there stay there just released up a little bit on me but maybe six to ten feet right we've got a really good chance of going back to back and the strategy off the tee has definitely paid off hasn't it had I gone driver, I mean, there's really not much room up here. Again, having never played here before, I think if I'd have gone with driver, I could have got lucky, could have hit it into the position that I needed to. Had I missed the green, right, just even on the fringe or the, the, the kind of the banking of the green, it would have gone into the trees. Over the back would have probably caught a path, gone into the trees or the next tee. Left looks like OB. Right, so it's my first left to right putt of the day as well. All my putts so far have actually been a little bit right to left say all of them there's not been that many but so i'm gonna line my writing up just gotta get my pace better mentioned it earlier on my pace is my pace is never firm enough i'm trying to really push myself now just to if i miss it miss it a foot long not dead weight back to back yes we're two under progress i like it Wow, just getting to this par three. I've still not seen the green yet. So there's the T. Oh my word. How the hell am I going to get down there? I need the cable car. Right. There's the green. Wowza. That's awesome. 180 yards. I don't know if you can see. There are cars passing through that gap. There we go. So it definitely won't play 180. This is where these golf buddy rangefinders are great because they've got, obviously got the slope on them. So it's actually playing 144. Be really careful on distances like on, on holes like this when you've got a decline or an incline, it will play a totally different yardage. If I play this 170, I'll kill someone in a car. I'm swinging it well today. Just left of the flag, should be on the green though. I can't see what's down there. That, oh, I can see a bunker. I'll be surprised if I'm in the bunker though. I feel like I've gone about pin high, maybe just shy of pin high, but maybe on the fringe, can't really see it, but what a hole. Turns out I am in the bunker, right. Okay, it's not the hardest bunker shot, the lip's quite small. Just gotta try and get my distance right, really. 58 degree, I might open the blade up a little bit just to make sure I do clear that. Slight upslope, lovely lie. Not hit it hard enough, played it too soft. I actually went a little bit too deep into the sand then. So too much cushion, ball and sand. Hate these types of shots. When you got that false lip, you sometimes just go a little bit too short and don't quite hit it hard enough if you take a lot of sand. Had I taken the sand that I wanted to take, it would have obviously carried a bit further. For a, mate, for a beautiful par three, I've really not played it well. And that's frustrating. Way too much break. I mean, it was aggressive. Funny that, if that was for birdie, I'd have missed that. For par, bogey even, just don't even think about it. Okay, hole 15. This is the hardest hole on the golf course. It's stroke index one for those with handicaps. 403 yards. Uphill, obviously we just walked down a massive one, so we had to go back up eventually. Not all the way though. And the fairway kind of slopes from right to left and it narrows out the longer you hit it. So this is the perfect time now. If you've got an app on your phone, if you've got a range finder to start zapping some trees, if you've got a golf watch as well, to try and get some an idea of distances. Uh, I've got 206 to those on the right. 235 to the ones on the left because it, I mean it's so this one's quite self-explanatory in the way that the distances don't matter too much because I'm not going to hit a driver because it's too narrow I could thread a th I feel like I could thread a three wood but then it's like well is there any benefit in doing that and the benefit really is the fact that it's playing uphill it's 403 uphill so maybe playing 420 or 430 
and really if anything the wind is probably slightly hurting so that's why I would now tend to go onto the three wood because a three iron will maybe leave me still 200 yards into my for my second shot which I don't really want so there's got to be an element of like aggressive thinking without being too safe safe would be a three iron five iron approach which at the end of the day a three iron and a five iron consecutively to strike them perfectly straight is not that easy whereas a three wood i could get away with maybe a seven or an eight iron approach right i've not hit this very often since i got it. it's the brand new tsr i've gone for the tsr three exactly the same shaft as the driver yeah it's not been hit not hit this very very much at all yes <laughs> literally the relief threaded it straight down the middle little tiny drawer on it and that's why it's in the bag ladies and gents that is why it's in the bag it's such a beautiful three wood Titleist never made great three woods i feel like they always struggled with three woods but this one they may have just got it right okay this is not great light for the camera so i do apologize it's not great light for me i can't see a thing flag flag is 172 so it's put me in the seven iron seven iron distance 172 including the slope up the hill if anything it looks like if i do miss the green it could camber back down onto the green for me if i miss it by too much it's probably pretty dead miss it left it's going to go down the hill left i can't see any of the green but i can see all of the flag so i can't see if there's any bunkers either i can't tell if there's any bunkers it doesn't look like it impressed with my football I'm going to weigh in because I've got my drawer and the ball's slightly hanging, slightly, slightly above my feet, so it's a slightly hanging lie. I am going to aim to the right of the flag by about maybe five, five yards or so. Keeping my swing thought. So a video I did recently was about keeping your backside against the wall. That's exactly all I'm thinking of now. Keeping my backside against the wall and just kind of keeping my weight a bit more back towards my heels. And it's moving a bit better. You'd be surprised, but the tips that I talk about, I do use them myself, you know. Oh, I've hit that so good, but I've no idea where it's gone. Oh, it's on the flag. <laughs> it's just landed down at the flag. Oh, such a strike. My golf tips are really good. Ah, oh, this is a really beautifully framed hole. Beautifully framed green as well with the camera all bouncing down. Bet there's been some nice, some lucky shots here. Miss the green to the right, bounce it off the slope, make it for birdie. But I've gone the conventional way. I've gone three wood, seven iron, uphill, left to right, put. Not hit it. Let's stop doing that so focused so much down the line that I didn't actually hit it right 16th hole 391 yards it looks like it's downhill probably playing slightly downwind as well but then the, the the kind of fairway just disappears and what's worrying me in the back of my mind I don't know if I'm relating this correctly is I saw a hazard to the left of the 15th now that's probably too far up to be on the hazard on this hole as well but I, I can't remember. So I'm gonna play this safe. I'm gonna to play to what I can see. And again, that's important. Downwind, downhill, 390, I could get a driver close, but I could also get this inside of about 120. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. I'm gonna play safe, get it inside 120. Lost it in the air. Oh, there it is. Yep, that way completely lost it when it took off got worried then but it's perfect middle of the fairway i feel this way you can score you can play a little bit stress-free stress-free is the wrong word in golf isn't it it's bloody stressful regardless but i just feel like you can you can definitely score better now obviously if i'm with if i'm with the muppets if i'm with finchy rick fryer we're hitting driver everywhere and that's probably why you see me making so many bogeys and doubles because i get baited into not playing golf in the correct way so sometimes please ignore the blocks not the best version of me right that was a perfect club selection off the tee because if i'd have 
hit something that caught this slope, could have been serious trouble. Got 126 flag, including the slope. So, once, to be honest with you, it's a perfect gap wedge. I get, I've got a bit of a backstop behind the flag there as well. It kind of pulls, it kind of slopes back to the flag. So if I go too far, I could spin it back. That would be nice. There's a ball on the green already because I just hit an insane five iron for an Instagram reel. Go check out my reels. Oh, what a video that was going to look like. Not obviously not edited it yet, but it has to look good. Right, gap wedge, 125. Wasn't an amazing strike, I'll be honest. I pulled it. Poor shot. I'm going to hit another one because I've actually got my club selection wrong there. Because that has to be the most perfect of strikes. And what I've actually done is I've played to the playing yardage, including the slope. So not only is it having to be a perfect strike, I'm going to go down up to a pitching wedge because the actual yardage was like 135, which is a perfect wedge. And obviously a little bit downhill, I'd rather just take a bit off an easy wedge, especially in hindsight. Just felt so much easier. I pulled it as well. <laughs> slightly ball or slightly above the feet, but just so much easier to hit the middle of the green and get pin high. Poor club selection, missed green in regulation. All right, I've got a little 50 degree for a little chip and run. It's up the hill, left to right. I'm going to aim a good four foot left of the hole here. Turning, 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 turning and slow. Turning and slow, yes. Oh, happy with that. Happy with that. It's a part of my game I'm trying to improve on, just in and around the greens, that little chip and run. I don't play it enough. I don't have the confidence to, but that one felt good. And we're away with a par. Happy with the way the hole turned out. Happy to play that shot well but club selection was poor for the second. Right, hitting straight back into the sun. Always a difficult shot. Don't know why, we still have the same golf swing, but always feels more difficult. Three, eight, nine, par four. Looks a lot more open this hole, so just get up there with the driver. Felt good, can't see a thing. Yeah, fine. It's the right side of the fairway. Definitely fairway, that was good. Okay, not perfect, but I'm okay. The fairway kind of canvas from left to right, so it's all kind of bounced right on me. Got 163. If anything, the wind's kind of helping a little bit left to right. It's not much there though, it's pretty flat calm. Um, so I'm just gonna hit my normal shot. I'm just gonna hit an eight iron, but I'm just gonna try and encourage a bit of a fade off the ball flight. I can, I can still see the edge of the green. So even if it doesn't fade, it should hit the green anyway. That's my theory. Got to make sure I don't hit these overhanging branches. I've got an eight iron. Hit it really well and lost it again in the, in the light. Oh, there it is, yeah. I think it's either caught that edge of the green or it's just a bit short front edge. Hard to tell. Guys, as this vlog draws to a close, I want to say a massive thank you to Cleveland Golf Club. Love this place, uh, played here couple of times on the front nine obviously today's the first time on the back nine it's a thoroughly enjoyable golf course I'm going to be basing myself here over the winter so plenty of content to come from Cleveland Golf Club but guys if you're new to the channel please do hit that subscribe button follow me on all my social media platforms loads to come see you soon all right I've got to be honest I'm getting some unwanted practice from this sort of shot now I've got the 58 50 degree again little chip and run same sort of shot as the last hole really Dog leg left. Go on, release a bit more, release a bit harder. Oh, it's a good six short. Right. I need to hold this to stay in the red. I feel like I played well enough overall, but if I miss it, then the score will say otherwise. Uphill left to right, just continue along the line of the pitch, really. Not hit it hard enough again. Say that again, dead weight. So when I hit it dead weight, I never allow for anywhere near enough break. I hit the, the amount of break I allow for is a putt that goes about here. And that's what I need to start doing. I don't fancy aiming more left. 
I just need to hit it harder. Level par.